नमस्कार कला एंड शास्त्र गो हैंड इन हैंड जस्ट लाइक लैंग्वेज एंड ग्रामर शास्त्र हैज प्लेड क्रुशल रोल especially in the journey of indian art forms because they have faced number of transformations number of peaks and valleys especially in case of dance the shastra has proved to be backbone in the process the dance has been a systematic sphere in ancient india with a strong tradition of training extensive documented literature for training and retention purpose in the absence of videography the guru shishya parampara and this literature of dance has proved to be they are the two medias who have helped dance to survive through the centuries today i will be talking about the importance of medieval sanskrit text on dance for uh, the import, their importance for dance as well as for dance history if we talk about shastra for, for classical dance today even today we majorly refer to natya shastra from second century and at the most uh, sangeet ratnakara from 13th century or abhinay darpana of course research have proved that uh, research has proved that abhinay darpana is not an entirely original work but it is basically a student handbook it is a collection of relevant verses from uh, from many other scriptures so even today talking about shastra of classical dance we rely upon we bank upon second century uh, natya shastra however this dance is such a volatile and dynamic art form that this gap of 19 centuries from second century to uh, to 2023 for that matter uh, it's it's a big gap to consider natya shastra as the only shastra granth for dance today however there are many important texts dedicated to dance which are not well known they are not studied in detail to list a few nritya ratnavali of jaya sena who was contemporary of sangeet ratnakara uh, there is hasta muktavali of shubhankara nritya adhyaya of ashok mallya uh, 13 late 13th or 14th century nritya ratnakosha of kumbha nartan nirnay of pundarika vithala 16th century sangeet darpana of chatur damodar and many more hardly any of these text are studied and analyzed in depth with the perspective of classical dance times too today i will attempt to talk about the importance of these medieval sanskrit text for dance and history of dance the dance in ancient india has developed as a part of a mixed presentation which was called as natya which was basically a storytelling genre that had all medias together drama dance singing instrumental dance was added to the story presentation as an adornment the dance was mostly pure dance that is nritya so that is dance that concentrates on the body movements creating visual beauty and that uh, that is not emotive or expressive that is called nritya it was in the medieval period that dance split its way from drama and developed in two different ways the dasha rupakas were added with many sub variants called as called as uparupakas these uparupakas as ramachandra gunachandra divides them were further developed into three different genres namely nritya rupaka natya rupaka geya rupaka see these uparupakas bhana bhanika durmalika shilpaka dombi hallisaka rasaka prekshana they were a mixture of dance drama and music however some of the genres had drama as their essential part whereas others had dance as their essential part these uparupakas further developed into various desi dance forms such as perani gondali rasaka shivapriyam dohaka and many more this dance drama stream has today developed into various dance drama genres which are per performed by more than one dancers or a group of dancers such as kathakali kuchipudi or yakshagana and such the dance also developed on the other hand as a solo performance or solo presentation this solo repertoire was known as shuddha paddhati which can be considered as which can be called as the precursor form of solo dance styles performed today such as kathak however this evolution of dance from ancillary part of drama 
uh, in natya shastra to the dance dramas or solo dance styles today it's still unclear the studies of these medieval scriptures will enable us to join the dots between or bridge the gap in this huge gap in this huge jump from second century to 19th century from natya shastra to contemporary dance styles the literature of dance or the shastra of dance in ancient india includes an array of sanskrit and prakrit treatises dedicated to dance and music this text range from second century natya shastra to the text in 17th century like sangeet makaranda and to further works in vernacular languages expanding till 18th century this text are the records or documentations of the dance performed in that period this extensive number of dance manuals from 2nd century to 18th century have done the codification of dance and hence they are witness of the evolution of dance from 2nd century to modern day they record body movements their terminologies various categories of dancing concepts related to dance such as the place of performance the stage the backstage the order of the repertoire also the training of dancers their social status musical instruments used the textual source of dance in sanskrit can be roughly divided into three different periods for understanding we are calling them natya shastra period sangeet ratnakara period and nartana nirnaya period before going to every period these texts are further observed to be of these two categories the first category includes mainly the works on music or dramaturgy on sangeet or natya but they include a single chapter of on dance as an ancillary part of drama or in later years they the these works have included the chapter on dance just for the sake of achieving inclusivity since gitam vadyam tatha nrutyam trayam sangeetam uchyate hence after discussing their prime area of music they mention that they are lastly discussing dance just for the sake of tradition just to follow the order and include dance following the uh, footsteps of their of their predecessors so they say vishaya anukramena agatam paramparagatam uh, and so on and so forth so these authors might not be the scholars of dance so they just they have just copied the dance chapter of the last established authority point so if the text is in natya shastra period mostly they have replicated the dance chapter of natya shastra if the text is from second period they have replicated the dance chapter of sangeet ratnakara uh, sangeet damodara sangeet chandra are such text however the text tradition also includes many texts that are dedicated mainly to the discussion of dance and record the contemporary dance to the utmost detail this second textual tradition is an important source for dance history as the text and dance record recorded in them reflect the autonomy of dance as an independent art form they also reflect the evolution of dance from margi temple dance to the contemporary solo performing presentation while discussing these three periods we aim to focus on the second type of dance scriptures that discuss dance in their in its own right as we can see the first period is starting with natya shastra although there are references of some other text before natya shastra like uh, natya sutras but natya shastra is the first available text and hence considered as the fountain head of the shastra tradition the first period is natya shastra period in this period dance was a part of drama it was used as as an adornment or the fillers of drama the second period starts from 13th century onwards sangeet ratnakara and another text from the same period is as i said nrutya ratnavali of jayasena the text in this period record desi variations which are contemporary practice to the great extent however they discuss these desi variations as the secondary variations after margi so they have discussed margi uh, following natya shastra tradition and then as an exception as a variation they have recorded the desi uh, uh, dance forms this is also pe the period when the dance had begun to be presented as an independent presentation and this period also marks the beginning of the solo presentation the third period begins with the 16th century text uh, which is a pioneering text indeed nartan nirnaya by pundarika vithala followed by sangeet darpana of chaturadamodara 
This period mostly skips the distinction of Margi and Desi and has recorded Desi itself as the mainstream dance. Till this period, the dance is already established as an independent performing art in solo as well as group format. We can see the extensive variety of dance elements and dance forms. They indicate the popularity of dance as an independent separate presentation presentational form. The dance recorded in the text of this third period can be closer or I would say the, the closest to the modern traditional dance, modern classical dance as compared to the previous texts. Now we'll see how the dance has step-by-step step developed as a solo presentation with the help of this textual tradition. The first period extends from Bharata to 10th, 11th century when the dance work was considered as adornment and sometimes fillers in drama performance. The dance was used necessarily in the preliminary part or that we called as Purvaranga. The Purvaranga Vidhi in Natya Shastra contained the Nritta or pure dance. This dance was used in Purvaranga with two different purposes, two different formats. Mm, firstly, in the form of Pushpanjali. So Pushpanjali was used, uh, Pushpanjali dance, the dance from Pushpanjali was used to invoke the gods firstly and to welcome the elites, maybe the kings or other elites in the Sabha. Uh, apart from this, this Purvaranga part, at the end of Purvaranga, Pindi Bandha or group choreographies were performed. This group choreographies even appear to be a later addition uh, with the special purpose of adornment. Uh, as we have seen in the legend of Natyodpati, Nrutta was added at the suggestion of Lord Shiva. The attractive group choreographies must have, must have been used to grasp the attention of audience for the upcoming performance of Natya. Secondly, dance was used occasionally in the drama, in the depiction of particular events such as war, festivals, celebrations. And also dance was used for the entry of a major character, entry of a character. In Natya Shastra, hence in Natya Shastra, the Purvaranga chapter of Natya Shastra discusses all the charis, karanas, angaharas, and all the aspects of pure dance. All other texts in Natya Shastra period mainly follow Bharata and present the dance in the same way, part of Purvaranga. Uh, Vishnu Dharmottara Puranas, Nrutta Sutra, Shrungar Prakash of Bhoja, Natya Darpana, uh, Nataka Lakshana, Ratna Kosha of Sagar Nandi. These are the, all the texts. They strictly follow the Bharata's dance version. The second period is known as Sangeet Ratnakara period that start around 11th to 12th century onwards. It is from this period that dance has started its journey as an independent art form, independent from Natya. Sangeet Ratnakara is a first text to have the two-fold discussion of dance. Firstly, the dance is firstly the dance is discussed in as a purvaranga of drama, just following the Natya Shastra tradition. But secondly, dance is also discussed as an independent presentation. So the author describes separate occasions for drama presentation and separate occasion occasion for pure pure dance or nurta performance. So some events are dedicatedly meant for Natya. Some events are dedicatedly meant for Nrutta performance. Drashtavya Natya Nrutyate Parva Kale Visheshataha Nruttam Tuatra Narendranam Abhisheke Mahotsavi. So there are two different occasions. Here Natya will be presented and there pure dance presentation will be there. Sangeet Ratnakara discusses the dance elements such as Karana, Angahara, etc. Uh, in the preliminaries of Natya, Purvaranga. However, Sangeet Ratnakara mentions a separate, a new sequence of presentation of dance. It has a separate Purvaranga Vidhi. So this new Purvaranga Vidhi is different from the Purvaranga Vidhi of Natya. This new Purvaranga Vidhi belongs to the presentation of dance, performance of dance. This sequence of dance presentation is termed as Shuddha Paddhati and is mentioned in the Nartanadhyaya of uh, Sangeet Ratnakara, after Sampradaya Lakshana, or after he describes the musician's crew, uh, he describes his Shuddha Paddhati. Fundamentally, the Shuddha Paddhati is mentioned as the sequence of musicians by Sangeet Ratnakara. 
However, the sequence of Shuddha Paddhati includes detailed description of dance as well. Uh, the sequence includes tuning of instruments, playing of Mela Pakka, Pushpanjali behind the curtain, Pushpanjali in front of curtain, entry of dancer, uh, then Pushpa, offering Pushpanjali in the middle of stage. Then the, he hints at the main body of dance performance that the single patra, single dancer will perform. Sharan Deva has labeled this new sequence of dance presentation as Shuddha Paddhati. This is clear indication of solo presentation where an individual patra is performing the prelude as well as the main body of performance. He does not give, give many details about the dance, uh, dance sequence after the Purvaranga. So the main body is not much described. Maybe the at this stage, the Shuddha Paddhati was in developing stage. So uh, uh, it is loosely described and it is uh, left to the dancer to develop the main body. This sequence order is technically mentioned as the order for musicians group, how to uh, uh, accompany the dance. So the dis but description leaves no doubt that this sequence is an order of solo dance presentation. It is a possibility that since Sangeet Ratnakara also is not a text dedicated to dance, so Sangeet Ratnakara must have addressed this to the musicians uh, informing them about the, the, the solo dance repertoire and how to accompany this solo dance repertoire. So he has mentioned Shuddha Paddhati as the musicians, the orchestration uh, sequence for the dance. This beginning of new phase is also supported by the contemporary work Nritta Ratnavali of Jaya Sena, which is a more dance centric work compared to uh, Sangeet Ratnakara. Nritta Ratnakar, Nritta Ratnavali has also discussed dance bilaterally. Firstly, in, in the discussion of Natya and secondly, as an independent performance. The Nritta Ratnavali has used the word Shiksha Paddhati and not Shuddha Paddhati. Uh, he says Shuddha Paddhati is the musician's Paddhati, Sh Shiksha Paddhati is the dancer's Paddhati, but later Shuddha Paddhati, the term Shuddha Paddhati was uh, well established. Maybe Sangeet Ratnakara was much uh, established and popular text, well accepted text. So the terminology from Sangeet Ratnakara must have been adopted afterwards. Nat Ratnavali has given the solo dance performance order with more details than Sangeet Ratnakara. Where Sangeet Ratnakara just mentions the Patra enters, Ratnavali gives in detail process of entering, the sthanak, the directions of entering. Nat Ratnavali states that the music should be played played in a particular order. First percussion instrument, then mouth instruments, and then the actual song or poetry. The dancer emotes the song and its meaning, and the rhythm patterns are imitated with the footwork. Uh, Nritta Ratnavali says, uh, so Sangeet Ratnakara keeps the main body of the performance flexible, leaves it to the uh, dancer, whereas Nritta Ratnavali says that Lasyanga should be added as the main body. Now here, last year, the word last year, uh, even till Nrutta Ratnavali, the word last year was not established as the feminine, with the meaning of feminine dance, as we know the word last year today. Um, then the word last year was implied as uh, the pure dance, Nrutta. So here, last year angers, uh, imply the pure dance sequences. So Nrutta Ratnavali, clearly uh, uh, gives a sequence that is there is a prelude of solo presentation and then we have pure dance sequences. This new phase in Ritta Ratnavali and Sangeet Ratnakara is further developed in 13th, 14th century um, as I have given here in Ritta Ratna Kosha, we are, we are we can see that things are getting added to the repertoire. We can see in Ritta Ratna Kosha, gatis are added before lasangas. So we have the Purvaranga, then gatis, and then lasangas. Uh, even in Ritta Ratna uh, uh, Nritya Dhyaya, we have this. Uh, but even at this stage, at the end, the main body is still left to the dancer. It is it is loosely mentioned, and dancer has to uh, fill the remaining colors. It is the 16th century text Nartan Niranaya that is the pioneer text text for this Shuddha Paddhati. Nartan Niranaya has developed Shuddha Paddhati to a great extent, adding a detailed opening sequence. So it is not just Pushpanjali; it has Nandi, Pushpanjali, 
Sulu and other uh, dance items to be performed in Milam with a slow speed in the beginning of the performance. Unlike its predecessors, Nartanirne not just hints at the main body, but has given a complete detailed sequence of the main body of Shuddha Paddhati. So we have this sequence of Shuddha Paddhati in Nartanirnaya. We have Mukhachali, Pushpanjali Sulu, then we have Nandi, then we have Gatis, and the main body. Now this main body has a string of a series of many small dance compositions. These dance compositions are mainly of three types, Purupas, Dhuadas, and Bidulagavas. So uh, we have clearly described complete solo dance presentation. Invocation, detailed invocation, followed by series of small compositions presented one after another. Further, many texts, Sangeet Darpana, Sangeet Makaranda of Vedasuri, Sangeet Muktavali of Devendra, they have explicitly mentioned the Shuddha Paddhati and included the same detailed sequence, same detailed repertoire. Uh, in fact, their variants and subvariants keep on adding. Thus, from Sangeet Ratnakara onwards, we can observe that dual development of dance, firstly as a part of drama presentation, and secondly as an independent solo presentation called as Shuddha Paddhati. This Shuddha Paddhati is observed to be established completely by 16th to 17th century when it is described as the mainstream solo dance sequence. Thus, this Shuddha Paddhati has detailed opening sequence followed by a series of small dance compositions. This, te this textual tradition from Sangeet Ratnakara onwards gives us insight about this development of solo dance presentation or Shuddha, Shuddha Paddhati. This Shuddha Paddhati, uh, as it is flashed, um, as it is seen in the slide on the screen, this repertoire order is quite similar to the Vastu Krama of Kathak today. So there is further scope to analyze and to establish this Shuddha Paddhati as precursor form of uh, Vastu Krama of Kathak today. Analyzing the evaluation of repertoire order, we can observe that the dance elements have also evolved over a, over a period of time. So the Karanas Angaharas Chari that were there in Natya Shastra, they became the Lasyangas or uh, Utpuluti Karanas or uh, Chalakas in the 13th to 14th century. Further in 16th century, these same Lasyangas, Chalakas, they become uh, they became uh, Udupas, Dhuadas, Bidulagavas. And now they in other form, they have they are seen in at various points in various classical dance styles today. In-depth analysis of this textual tradition will give us a comprehensive map of how the dance elements have traveled from Karana's Angaharchari of Natya Shastra throughout the, through these centuries to the various elements seen today in today's classical dance. And in this process of joining the dots uh, or bridging the gap, the third period of text, the text in 16th, 17th century, are they will play a major or crucial role. Thus, we can observe that this third period text, Nartan Nirnaya onward, 16th century text, have dance that is more comparable with today's dance repertoire. We observe the popularity and extensive development of dance, as well as amalgamation of foreign styles, such as Persian style, Jakkadi. Now, this Jakkadi is seen in Iranian text majorly, and in Indian text, this Jakkadi form is seen only in Nartan Nirnaya of 16th century. And this Jakkadi is comparable with the Ghungat Gat that is performed in Kathak today. As mentioned before, this repertoire of Shuddha Paddhati with invocation followed by main body of series of small compositions, Urupa, Duwada, Bidu, Lagava. This order is very close to the dance repertoire today. This text, Nartan Nade onwards, all the texts have detailed description of these compositions with which uh, like which sasthanaka should be used, uh, the sanaka will be followed by which chari, which gati, in which manner, in which speed variants they are to be followed, how it will end with the brahmari or with a sanaka. So they have a detailed choreographic description. 
the study of this dance compositions will uh, open many theoretical as well as practical avenues um, in history of dance. The historic dance reconstruction is the reconstruction of dance based on available resources, uh, in this case, textual resources. In absence of videography, we do not have ancient dance available in the medium of dance itself. Hence, we have to rely on some other media, such as text, sculpture, painting. But these other media might not have captured the dance in its entirety. Hence, the dance reconstruction is needed. The dance reconstruction is an upcoming research field and um, dance reconstruction attempts are uh, very uh, popular and well accepted uh, in USA, Europe, uh, even in Iran, some, some such efforts are made. The dance reconstructions in the dance reconstruction involves converting the textual information of dance in its own medium so that it can be comprehended entirely. Thus, analysis of this text will, will enable us to reconstruct these dance compositions. And this re dance reconstruction based on textual source will further expand the avenue called as dance archaeology, where these reconstructed dance performances can be presented in museum. And to understand ancient Indian dance, one must not rely upon sculptures or paintings or text, but one can actually watch this reconstructed dance performance. However, this dance reconstruction needs in-depth analysis of Sanskrit text as well as um, awareness and knowledge of practicing tradition of dance. Presently, most of the texts are interpreted by Sanskrit scholars who have worked immaculately on the translation, but they may or may not have the trans practitioner's eye. Here, I do not wish to pinpoint any flaws in the works of the scholar like Raghavan or Satyanarayana, but I wish to underline the need of an hour that the practicing dancers should look into this interpretation. Uh, example of, I would like to cite one example of Urupa, uh, one of the composition uh, reconstructed. Uh, the Urupa uh, is, uh, its adjective is adrushta prushta. Now adrushta prushta is when the back is not seen. Back is not seen by the audience. So as, uh, as we know, the stage setting in the medieval period, the audience used to sit either surrounding or on the three sides of the stage. So as seen in on the uh, figure on the left side, uh, in the any normal urupa, the dancer would perform the urupa in all direction that many times, so many times to all direction, to a direction A, B, C, D, E, so that audience sitting in every direction will uh, will be able to enjoy that moment. So when the dancer is performing Urupa, he will travel to direction A, then directly to direction B, then directly to C, D, E, as shown on the left side the diagram. But when the Urupa is Adrushta Prushta, you can't show your back, you can't turn your back to the audience. So after performing the Urupa in direction A, at the same way, turning back to the center, you have to come back to the center and again, then again go to the direction B. Again come back to the center, then again go back to the tradition, uh, direction C. So the Urupa performance design or the Urupa performance marga will change as per the word Adrushta Prushta. Here I would like to uh, mention one more one more small example. There is one more movement of Urupa called as Muru. The, this is the movement, Muru. And there is a variation known as Rattai Muru. Now, word Rattai means uh, the spinning wheel of when? Rahat. So, uh, translator Satyanarayana has translated this Rattai Muru is repetition of Muru. So, when Muru is repeated, it is called Rattai Muru. But the word rahata gives an extra perspective to the repetition. It is not mere repetition. It is repetition with an alternative repetition. Like when this hands come down, at the same at the same time, this hand must go up. 
so this this movement must be expected from the word rattai mur so the subtle interpretation of these dance compositions are possible only if the researcher is uh, know has the knowledge of sanskrit as well as the researcher is dance practitioner thus we can re reconstruct these dance composition from the textual source and they will be a valuable resource for historical analysis as discussed before as well as they will be valuable from the archaeological point of view as well as from the creative point of view where a dancer can find many new possibilities or uh, inspirations from these ancient choreographies here lastly i want to demonstrate a small composition that i have reconstructed solely from the textual source of nartan nirnaya the the movement is called as bitra <laughs> धन्यवाद डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ संस्कृत एंड हिरक महोत्सव समिति धन्यवाद